For two large pizzas, someone paid 10,000 Bitcoin. Although the concept appears absurd now, this is thought to be the first Bitcoin transaction to ever take place in the real world. But do you know where the Bitcoin, or better, I should say the cryptocurrency, originally stemmed from? When American cryptographer David Chom published a conference paper explaining an early type of anonymous cryptographic electric money in 1983, the concept of cryptocurrencies first came to light. The idea was to create a kind of money that could be distributed anonymously and without the need for centralized organizations like banks. Based on his original concepts, Chom created the proto-cryptocurrency DigiCash in 1995. It required user software to withdraw funds from a bank and required specific encrypted keys before said funds could be sent to a recipient. Then Nick Zabo created Bitgold in 1998, which is frequently seen as a direct forerunner to Bitcoin. Participants had to devote computer resources to solving cryptographic challenges, and those that did so were rewarded. However, without the aid of a centralized authority, Zabo was unable to resolve the famed double spending issue digital data could be copied and pasted. As a result, it took another 10 years before an unknown individual or group acting under the alias Satoshi Nakamoto launched the development of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies by disseminating a white paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. The Bitcoin white paper, outlining the operation of the Bitcoin blockchain network, was released on October 31st, 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto. When Satoshi bought Bitcoin.org on August 18, 2008, they formally started working on the Bitcoin project. On January 3, 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto mined the first block of the Bitcoin network. In this first block, they included a headline from the Times, providing a permanent allusion to the economic circumstances involving bank bailouts and a centralized financial system that Bitcoin was in part a reaction against. During this time, as well as the first few months of its existence, Bitcoin had essentially no value. In April 2010, six months after Bitcoin first became tradable, one BTC was worth just under 14 cents. The cost rose to 36 cents by early November before leveling off at about 29 cents. Bitcoin was demonstrating that it has real-world value even though it wasn't yet worth much. It increased to $1.06 in February 2011 before declining once more to about 87 cents. The price skyrocketed in the spring, in part because of a Forbes article on the brand new cryptocurrency. The price of one Bitcoin increased from 86 cents to $8.89 between the beginning of April and the end of May. The price of the currency more than tripled in a week to roughly $27 on June 1st followed by the publication by Gawker of an article about its attractiveness in the online drug trafficking community. The market value of all Bitcoins in use was close to 130 million. But by September 2011, the price had reverted to about $4.77. One of the many forks of Bitcoin that debuted in October of that same year was Litecoin, with PPC coin, Namecoin, and 10 other cryptocurrencies trailing in the background in the earliest coin market cap database, Litecoin quickly overtook them as the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap. These cryptocurrencies, some of which split off from Bitcoin and others based on new code, were rapidly termed altcoins. Bitcoin values increased substantially throughout 2012, and the Bitcoin Foundation was created in September of that year to support the growth and adoption of Bitcoin. Ripple, at the time known as OpenCoin, was also introduced that year, and the project later attracted venture funding. In 2013, the price of Bitcoin fluctuated wildly due to a variety of legal, criminal, regulatory, and software-related challenges. Its price peaked at $755 on November 19th before plummeting to $378 the next day. On November 30th, it had risen all the way to $1,163, but this was the start of another long-term decline that culminated in Bitcoin falling down to $152 by January 2015. Although it's not its intended purpose, thieves find digital currency very alluring due to its anonymity and lack of centralized oversight. The largest Bitcoin exchange in the world at the time, Mt. Gox, failed and filed for bankruptcy in January 2014 after losing 850,000 Bitcoin. Although the specific circumstances are unknown, it's likely that the missing Bitcoins were taken over time, starting in 2011, and then sold for cash on several exchanges, until one day Mt. Gox checked their wallets and discovered they were empty. 
Even while the attack was not an isolated incident, it served as a lesson learned and exchange security has significantly improved since then. Although smaller exchanges are still frequently breached, larger platforms now offer stronger guarantees on their reserve holdings. Crypto traders are encouraged to properly store their Bitcoin using a hardware or software wallet rather than an exchange. These kinds of wallets were not as widely available at the beginning of the cryptocurrency era. From $434 in January 2016 to $998 in January 2017, the price of Bitcoin increased steadily each year. A software update for Bitcoin was approved in July 2017 with the intention of supporting the growth of the Lightning Network, a Layer 2 scaling solution and enhancing security. In August, a week after the upgrade went into effect, Bitcoin was trading at about $2,700 and then soared to a record-breaking high of slightly about $20,000 by December 17, 2017. At the same time, Ethereum, a brand new blockchain initiative, was creating waves in the cryptocurrency community. Since its inception in July 2015, Ethereum has quickly risen to the position of second largest cryptocurrency by market cap. It introduced smart contracts to cryptocurrencies, producing over 200,000 separate projects and offering up a wide range of potential use cases and still counting. But the price of Bitcoin was unable to maintain its record high of $19,783. Like Bitcoin, Ethereum was unable to sustain its current level for very long after reaching its own ATH of about $1,400 in January 2018. Due to security issues brought on by semi-regular exchange hacks and financial regulations, the market as a whole fell and by the end of 2018, Bitcoin was trading at about $3,700. Prices didn't stay low for very long either. Beginning in late 2020, Bitcoin experienced a sort of revival, which was sparked by the statement made in August by the business intelligence company MicroStrategy that it had purchased Bitcoin for $250 million. This started a bull market, which spread to the rest of the market, and prices were further driven up by Tesla's early 2021 purchase of $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. The month of November of that year saw Bitcoin achieve its all-time high price of $69,000. Since this peak, the market has dropped once again, dragged down by macroeconomic worries brought on by soaring inflation, rising interest rates, and the threat of war. However, the corresponding decline of the cryptocurrency market in 2021 and 2022 demonstrates how closely tied the industry is to conventional financial markets. The underlying technology of all cryptocurrencies, blockchain, has the ability to transform many facets of our society despite the tempting and sometimes disastrous volatility of cryptocurrencies. Blockchain technology has the potential to be used in practically every sector of the economy, whether it's offering accessible and reasonable financial exchange choices, protecting your personal money so that only you have access to them, or delivering correct data for your insurance quote. It's simple to grow enthusiastic about cryptocurrencies and their potential from an investment and technology standpoint as the market becomes more steady with more understanding and with the launch of new areas like stablecoins and decentralized finance or DeFi. This brings us to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.